Hi, Dominique. Thank you for doing the interview today. Uh, my hope is that somebody somewhere will watch this and maybe be inspired to try carnivore. So we're going to start you with a nice, easy question. How long have you been carnivore? Well, actually, two days ago, it was a year. So okay. um, I hadn't even realized what the date was. And I have an app on my phone that's one of these, like, you know, date cal uh, counter things. And I looked at it um, yesterday and thought, oh, I'm sure I started in September last year. So I clicked on it and it was like one year, one day. So I was like, huh, happy Can carniversary to me. <laughs> Brilliant. Can you remember what it was that made you go into that way of eating? So um, as a family, we'd been keto for about three years or so. Um, and we'd enjoyed it. And the first section of time, you know, we'd lost a lot of weight very quickly. Um, and then you so you bring a few carbs back into life, etc., uh, which didn't agree with us at all. So we always maintained that way. Um, however, last summer, you know, a few more of the keto sweet treats were edging their way in. And it's like, oh, it's the weekend. Let's get some keto cinnamon buns or something. Um, maybe a few like vodka sodas. And then we just realized, you know, there's no point in trying to cheat the system. We need to like rein it in a bit. And, you know, apart from the sweet treats and, you know, the odd alcoholic beverage, um, which was very odd. Um, the, um, the main thing we were eating was meat, eggs, cheese, that kind of thing. So we thought, actually, why don't we just make a change and try it? Um, previously, the sort of two years prior, after you know a big summer traveling seeing relatives whatever we'd often do like a carnival september um and you know having started it and feeling good we just decided to continue it on and here we are a year later that's brilliant so let's dial back to when you started we're looking at low carb or keto um yeah what made you look at the way you were you were eating you mentioned you'd lost some weight so can what was the maximum weight you'd got to um... so I had got to 82 kilos mm -hmm. and my husband had got to just shy of 100 um we'd been through various stressful periods at work you know us along with you know 5,000 others we all got made redundant from our local area and we were setting up our own businesses and that kind of forced us to work every hour. We'd feed the children well, actually, but just not so much ourselves. So we'd often go without dinner or, you know, one of us would run down to the petrol station and get some chocolate to eat with our laptops in bed or, you know, it, it was survival mode. But we, we both have a tendency to be able to put on weight very easily based on carbs. Mm -hmm. um, and so over the years my goodness, like the last 15, 16 years, we have, we tried, we tried everything, you know, we juiced, we'd done the South Beach, we had some quite good success with the South Beach diet. But then again, when you then revisit a diet, a few years later, you've learned the tricks, you're maybe not strict. So that didn't work as well for us as we'd hoped. Um, then we watched a movie called That Sugar Film. Oh, that's um, great, yes. It is a fabulous documentary and I'd recommend it to anyone. And that really highlighted to us the sugar content, content in low fat food. And, you know, we always thought we'd done well by us and the kids, you know, low fat Philadelphia, low fat Muller light, you yeah. know, stuff like this, not realizing that we were just doing ourselves more harm than good. Um, and then, and, you know, obviously the misinformation around low fat foods um, is just horrifying. And um, from that point on, so we stripped out all sugar in everything, all sauces, drinks, absolutely everything for the whole household. Um, and, you know, that was like a major withdrawal, you know, for all of us. So it was a, it was a tense couple of weeks. And then, you know, on reading more and doing more research and, and my husband and I, we're, we're medical research scientists. So you'd think we'd know better. 
than yeah. to just believe common perception of what foods are good and what are not. Um, and uh, that then led on to going into the, the low carb slash keto lifestyle, which, you know, we loved, you know, for the first time in years, we could eat butter and cheese and all the things that we love mm-hmm. um, without feeling guilty. And it just worked really well for us. So the big question is, you were 82 kilograms. What have you got down to? Ah, so my very lowest is 66. Mm-hmm. Um, and I haven't been there for probably about 18 months. Okay. Um, I, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a bone of contention with me, but as my clothes still fit, <laughs> yes. um, like- yeah, I haven't had to buy any bigger clothes. But I, I do think part of that's like a bit of a set point thing as well, yes. because I don't think I looked particularly healthy then. Um, but I was obviously lighter. Um, I think for me, a happy place is about 68 and I'm currently 71. So, but you know, I've just been on a two week vacation to Italy, which is very (laughs) hard to dodge the carbohydrates, especially if you're outside seeing most of the day. Yeah. So, um, what about Simon? As you've mentioned your husband, he was a hundred, wasn't he? What's he down to? I, I don't want to be quoted on it. I think he's currently around the 80-ish, okay. 85 mark. Again, he's carrying a bit of extra weight at the moment because we've been going through a stressful time at home and at work. Yes. Um, and we just both seem to be, you know, with the cortisol absolutely goes round our stomachs. Yes. Um, And that is one thing that we're very thankful for eating a sort of zero carb lifestyle and reducing as much inflammation out of our systems as we can, because then when cortisol comes, at least your body's only trying to deal with that. It's not trying to deal, you know, with everything else as well. So, you know, we're we're still sticking to the program, but, you know, there's life changes that need doing. Well, I think that's one of the thing I one thing I've noticed is, is if there's higher stress, this way of eating, yeah, you put on a little bit, but the old way of eating, you would have put on a ton of weight. And that's the thing. It's it's easier to moderate the, the weight gain. But you exactly said, you said a really interesting thing there that when you were your lightest, you didn't look your healthiest. I had that as well. When I did keto, I was the lightest I'd ever been, but everyone said, Wow, you look gaunt, you look really gaunt. With this way of eating, it's healthy, I think. So did you... Yeah, have- I mean, a sto- sorry, a story with regards to Simon is um, we, we were working at the time um, in a company and one of the admin girls came up to me and she's like, is Simon okay? And it's like, yeah, why? She says, oh, you know, he looks like he's seriously ill, <laughs> you know, and, and that was when we were at our lightest. So I definitely think, you know this way of eating the carnivore way of eating because you are eating you know lots of animal fats and stuff it just you know you can see it yourself Stephen I mean you're aging backwards you know your skin's glowing you have a vitality about you and I I think just overall you just look healthier brilliant thank you I'll I'll send you the check later for that that's brilliant thank you did you um did you have any health issues that you were also trying to resolve or was it purely a weight thing that you were doing? No, no. I mean, I, I've, I've always, um, I've, n- I've never had really health issues to speak of. Mm-hmm. Um, certainly, um, when, when you eat well, you feel better in yourself. So I think when I was back to my old way, maybe because I was carrying more weight, or maybe just I was more sedentary because I was very, you know, stuck in like a a job in one position you know for most of the hours of the day um so life was very different you do feel sluggish and short-tempered and stuff like this so I can definitely see a positive but no I didn't have any specific health needs that meant I needed to go this route okay so um what's a typical day of eating I I know you've just come back from holiday but in the main when you're when you're doing carnivore uh, as good as yeah. it have been, uh, you know, over the year, what would be a typical hmm. day of eating, you know, like the frequency and, and what? Well, for example, it's now quarter past six here 
And about an hour and a half ago, I had a ribeye. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was the first thing I'd eaten today. Um, wow. And that, that was purely, that, that's, that's pretty typical. I never eat before sort of two, three o'clock in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I have a couple of espressos. I'm not one of these carnivores that's managed to rule out coffee because in my mind, well, firstly, I don't have many vices because I don't really drink. I don't do anything else. So I'm going to enjoy my morning coffee. Um, <laughs> so I have a couple of uh, espressos in the morning. Um and, you know, I'm working from home at the moment, so the fridge is very nearby, but I just have no inclination to go anywhere near it. Um, I'll probably have a little snack a, a bit later, um, which would typically be like some bacon mm-hmm. or some cheese or a few spoonfuls of clotted cream if I feel I want it. Yeah. Um, but I'm generally a one meal a day kind of person when I'm you know, properly on the program, which is 98% of the time. Um, one, one habit I have got out of since getting back from holiday is my electrolytes. So I, I'm back on that again today with a vengeance because I forget that living in a hot country, I've got to keep my electrolytes topped up because the last two nights, around two, three, four o'clock in the morning, I've woken up with the most terrible foot cramps. Mm. And uh, I'm like, damn it, I must do the electrolytes. <laughs> but so where, um, apart from that. Just for people listening, where are you that's very hot? Oh, so I'm sorry. Yeah, so I'm British, but we currently live in Dubai. Yeah. So at the moment, it's typically about 45 degrees Celsius. Yeah. Um, and although be- you don't spend that much time outside, yeah. obviously, when you get in the car, it's hot. When you, you know, go from the car to a building, it's hot. Yes. So I forget that I must keep, even though I'm not outside, outside, I must keep the fluids up. Yeah, I was just confirming that because anyone listening will think, well, she's British. It's not very hot there. Exactly. I'm <laughs> sorry. It's definitely not because Simon's currently on a flight on the way back from the UK to here. And he all he's done for two weeks is moan about how cold he is. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. OK, so I just really wanted to sort of sum up the idea of us to give people an idea of different people and how they follow this way of eating if if someone was new would you be able to offer them any tips to this way of eating or any advice i mean i i would say listen to your body eat when you're hungry don't eat when you're not hungry i mean i i'm reinstilling that back into our now 16 year old daughter because she's been back at school two weeks now and she is carnival most of the time I mean, she's out with her friends now, so God knows what she's eating at the cinema. But I don't limit her on things like that. When she's at home, she eats what we eat. When she's out with friends or whatever, she can do what she likes because she regulates herself Mm -hmm. because she knows how rubbish she feels. So no doubt she's having popcorn. But I know when she gets home later, she's going to feel dreadful etc but that's a that's a and she knows that before she eats it so it was a judgment call she's decided yeah. to make so salivate um what was i saying i was asking oh for yeah the the so, so she's got into the habit of walking into the house straight into the kitchen and opening the fridge after mm-hmm. school now american schools they have lunch at like 11 o'clock in the morning mm-hmm. so by the time she gets home at four o'clock she is pretty peckish um so we've had to like rein that in a little bit of like not going for a full-blown meal (laughs) at four o'clock in the afternoon because we're going to have dinner a bit later but just to more intuitively eat you know don't do it as a habit because you've walked in the door but just listen to your body Mm. and above all have a drink of water first because nine times out of ten you're actually thirsty and not hungry yeah brilliant and what electrolytes are you taking because i know someone's going to ask that I know. Well, I take, I know they're not, they're kind of carnivore-ish, but I take the LMNT ones. Um, I started that, uh, or I take Ultima. So I've got a big stash of Ultima here um, that I've bought over time. And then I quite like the LMNT. I like the the chilli aspect of them. So I like the mango chilli. Simon Mm. likes the habanero, which I find too hot. Um. Um, but I just find them useful because they're not that sweet. Even the flavor ones are not that sweet. Mm. Um, but um, I like them. 
I mean, it's a pain in the neck for me to get them because I have to import them from the States. But, you know, it's it's better that than some of the ones that are sold locally here have a very high sugar content. So brilliant. Well, thank you very much for doing the interview. No problem at all. I hope it was useful.